Ladies and gentlemen, let's read game instead of video. We're going to be speaking about recent comments that both John Carmack from, of course, id Software and Oculus Rift, as well as Tim Sweeney from, of course, Epic, have made regarding the Steam OS. Now, the Steam OS, just in case you're not too familiar with it, is a Linux based operating system that Valve are going to be giving away for completely and utterly free. I'm going to I'll tell you guys a few of the features in just a moment, but there's a couple of reasons they're doing this. Um, but basically, it's going to, of course, work on machines that you build yourself, as well as the upcoming Steam machines, which, of course, are going to be uh, systems that have been made by approved vendors, and those machines, of course, will be available on different hardware configurations. But the Steam OS has um, many in the industry cautiously optimistic and so, John Carmack um, was discussing this, and they said, basically, he said that if it would be any other company that had been proposing this, he would call them basically crazy and would be extremely um, doubtful that they would be able to be successful. Indeed, his exact quote was, Valve approached id at the very beginning of Steam, asking about the launch title status for Doom 3. And we basically said, are you crazy? It would be nuts to tie yourself to this little notional digital distri distribution platform. But clearly, Valve have played a good, strong, long game. And I'm afraid that I might be at the same point right now where I'm like, making your own console OS, are you crazy? Maybe 10 years from now, they're going to be looking like they've made billions of profit again with it. It still seems a little dicey to me, given uh, getting everything moved over to Linux and pushing from that side of things, but given their track record, I'm a little hesitant to... If it was some other company, uh, random company, I would be pseudo-scornful. But it's Valve, so I'm not. Meanwhile, Tim Sweeney weighed in. Now, Tim, of course, is one of the big head honchos at Epic. And so he is a man who, just like uh, John Carmack, has a lot of experience in the industry. It's also worth noting that all of the guys are pretty good friends as well. Um, and he said, there's a lot of fear from major, major publishers and major developers of being tied down to platforms that are ultimately controlled by Microsoft and Sony, or others. Absolute control over certifications is scary, and their control of in-Congress rules out possibilities. We would like to go direct relationships with our customers, and they prevent it. The possibility of Steambox is real genuinely open platform based with Linux with multiple manufacturers the jump started by Valve but isn't absolutely controlled by Valve in the same way Microsoft and Sony control their platforms is very interesting it'll also go a long way to steering the console manufacturers into pursuing pursuing I'm sorry an enlightened path it's worth noting that previously in the 2012 QuakeCon um, where of course um, John Carmack always speaks. He noted that he wishes Windows 8 didn't exist. He says that there's nothing there he's looking forward to. Now, obviously, Windows 8 um, has brought about DirectX 11.2, but we know from um, recent discussions with John that, uh, you know, from what John said, as well as other industry um, bigwigs, in other words, people of high uh, technical knowledge in the gaming community that would be of course uh, analysts as well as programmers and games developers and platform creators and so on that DirectX is being considered more and more and more and more and more damaging as the platform continues to mature and Microsoft to be fair to them have done multiple things to improve this but it's just how the operating system works and they need to do a lot to try and improve this and mitigate the rather ludicrous um, CPU overheads. Now both Microsoft, both uh, NVIDIA and AMD have come to various improvements with this. Of course AMD are working with the Mantle technology. Now Mantle um, basically allows you to code very much to the metal of the GPU and is going to be targeted towards the GCN architectures. Meanwhile, NVIDIA um, 
and this has been something that NVIDIA have spoken about uh, in a conference that just happened a couple of days ago where John and various other uh, people in industry was discussing this and they believe that the OpenGL extensions that NVIDIA are already offering provide very similar benefits. Regardless, the big question is what does this actually mean for the Steam OS? The Steam operating system, um, and this has been what Valve have said, this is you know Gabe's, uh, Newell's comments, not my own, but Gabe has pretty much said that there's multiple problems with what he considers PC gaming. Obviously you've got performance issues. Now performance issues, they've basically transferred some of their in games internally working onto the Linux platform and they've found that the games have shockingly ran faster and this is still with immature drivers might I add from both AMD and Nvidia on the Linux platform. The reason behind this is because of a much less well let's just say a thinner application layer. Basically um, there's not so much CPU overhead and that's a very good thing. Um, DX is a ridiculously thick abstraction layer and despite the fact that DX11 and so on are making moves to become more multi-core um, orientated with things such as draw calls, it's still not exactly the way to go. Um, and so that's one thing that's kind of holding back the industry just a smidge. I would also argue that probably the bigger thing for most developers um, is actually not to do with the performance if we just leave that aside just for a moment and if instead we'll focus upon the open nature now windows back in 95 and 98 in particular were infamous with being unsecure there were you know so many issues with it it was ridiculous um one of the classic examples that uh, if you didn't have a patched machine and you were online um, pretty much your machine was guaranteed to have a problem where um, you were vulnerable to basically a shutdown exploit where the machine would automatically be shut down and there were ways around it as I said but it, it, it just was a mess and I had to remedy this problem for a couple of friends of mine um, who consistently had the problem uh, just because of the way their hardware was working plus as well lack of knowledge and it took Microsoft a while to patch that and I believe they fixed it um, shortly after the release of I can't remember which version it was I believe it was uh, 98 SE or could have been, yeah it was 98 SE but regardless this is nothing compared to the awesomeness known as Apple and the way that they patch and the, the way they approve patches for their software which Linux um, compared to Linux or even Microsoft is it's torture um, Gabe uh, in a conference was speaking about how it took six months for Valve to get something approved for the Apple platform and I'm sorry but when you're a company as big as Valve you have to basically wait six months for approval not to create the software not to fix the bug but to actually get approval for a patch you are waiting, you're effectively just sitting on your hands and you can't do a damn thing because you can't publish it without their permission. It's ludicrous. It is not a good way to conduct business and many are starting to criticize Microsoft for the same issues with uh, Windows 8 and so on. Obviously it's not quite so locked down but it's also not, but it's also nowhere near as smooth as it probably should be. Um, I have to confess that I do wish the Valve OS a lot of success. I do think that there are some dangers and risks behind it. I think, however, that AMD's Mantle technology and NVIDIA's own, of course, OpenGL extensions, John Carmack has stated that he believes the new extensions are going to be a really big part of the next generation of games. and. I think DirectX is starting to improve and I do wish Microsoft would improve it. I wish that they would continue. As Tim has said, Tim Sweeney, he believes that one of the big problems behind it is they kind of just abandoned it because they were pushing so hard with the Xbox um, 
But the reason they were, and this isn't um, this isn't an anti Microsoft rant. I actually really like Microsoft. Um, I use a lot of their products, but the reason many believe that they have done this is so that they can actually control the platform to a much greater extent. You know, they're basically that that you must get approval from Microsoft, and this was another issue um, that Indis had with working with Microsoft. I do hope and wish the best success for Valve. I don't necessarily know if it's going to replace Windows. I I could well be um, completely and utterly shocked. Like if I was to go and put into a time machine or, you know, put into a coma for six years and wake up and actually see the landscape, I imagine it's going to be completely different. Um, I think that from the perspective of gamers, it's going to be pretty insane. I do love the fact, however, it's free. And I think that Linux wouldn't actually be too difficult for most developers to start getting used to, especially if there's a decent uh, API and decent libraries for them to work with, which is the big thing. Um, obviously, they will require experience on the platform, but that's not too much of a big deal. I think that they can buy that in. At the moment, the big problem is debuggers and to actually be able to ensure that the code runs smoothly and optimally on the software. Um, obviously, you can't just magically port a game from Linux uh, to Windows or Windows to Linux, uh, especially if it's a big title. It's going to take a while for this to catch on. So I do, I do agree with uh, John. I mean, I personally, I've said this a couple of times. I hated Steam when I first used it. I, 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 I can't even describe my hatred for it. I, I just thought it was awful. It felt clunky. Especially back in the day, um, it wasn't ideal. It felt that it was always updating. It felt that it was kind of ugly looking, if I'm honest. It just felt, you know, especially because I didn't really own many games on it, it felt very clunky. It felt that it was just an extra layer, an extra step I had to go through simply to be able to play Counter Strike. But. Now, I adore Steam. I honestly do. Um, and sure, the Steam sales are a big part of that. But honestly speaking, sometimes it's not the cheapest place to buy games, even uh, while it's having sales. A lot of competitors do them as well. And to be fair, Gabe doesn't want a vision or a... As far as I understand, obviously I'm not in his mind. I don't know him personally. But from what I'm understanding... Um, and listening to the guy, he does not want a vision or a future where he controls the entire uh, landscape because he doesn't believe it's good for anybody. And I, I, I agree with that. Um, once you have a situation where all you're doing is having no competitors, you're in a completely closed down environment. Sure, it's good for you as a company, but it's also very bad for the environment. That it's bad for the gamers. It's bad for consumers. It's bad for technology. It's bad for innovation, because honestly speaking, it just takes so long to move forward. And I'm I'm very much looking forward to just how this is going to progress. I hopefully will be seeing Microsoft start improving things. To be fair to them, uh, Windows 8.1 is looking better. Um, than the original 8. I mean, I just, when I saw the original 8, and this is the same, by the way, for 2.12, uh, the server version. When I saw it, I was just like, what What are you doing? Stirp, just please stirp. Uh, it was just bad. I was, there's no start menu, for example. The way the start menu functions and the, the, um, the UI, it, was just it just wasn't ideal for desktop use in my personal opinion in sorry guys i caught the mic there in particular may i add for a server environment of course you could you know you can remedy it with multiple ways but just a default way to actually uh, control the system it just wasn't ideal on the other hand it does have a hell of a lot of potential um, they are starting to improve direct x as i said with functions such as tiled resources however of course that also has very similar extensions on OpenGL already. So we're just going to have to see, I guess. Regardless, I'm going to get going. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.